Now we start. Okay, we're going to do, this is the event. It's kicking off now. Um, okay, so for all the sessions in this room, except maybe this first one, for all the sessions in this room, we're going to do, do Q&As, like after people talk, for like 10, 15 minutes. So if you go to fitc.ca slash questions, you can pick a, a, a panel and put your question in there, and then we'll try to get to all of them if we can. So make sure you do that. That's, I'm going to be reminding you about that all day. You can do it anytime. Um, and now we're ready for our first speaker, Mr. Aaron Draplin. He's a graphic designer from Portland, Oregon, and he's managed to stay ferociously independent since 2004. And he's never going back to the big leagues, right? Yep. Never, never, never. Please welcome Aaron Draplin. All right, sir. Hi. You guys hear me okay? All right, all right. If I, if I do a little bit of this, too much, sorry. Can you still hear that? I think put this thing in front of my mouth. All right, sorry. Can make sure this works. That was an awesome. You know, you forget all the little parts and pieces that go into making these things tick. And every time I come to this one, they don't make that in Nebraska. You know what I'm saying? But you come to this one, it's always like so good. And I forget how long it took how to do that. So just think about that today when you're looking at all the design and the parts and the pieces and all these cool little buffers and goodies. I don't know what you call them. All right, everybody, let's get going here. This is a five-hour presentation. I hope you guys wore loose clothing for this because I got all screwed up on my flight over here, and I'm, I am jet-lagged somewhere over Borneo right now. I'm just coming from Portland, Oregon. Okay, let's just get it going, okay? Hello, everybody. This one is called Behind the Scenes with the Draplin Design Company and Other Lies, Fibs, and Perjuries, okay? All right? Hello, everybody. My name is Aaron James Draplin. I'm 49 and a half years old. My hair is starting to hurt. Uh, I'm a graphic designer from Portland, Oregon, from Michigan, actually, pretty close to here, uh, Traverse City, Michigan, Detroit, born in Detroit. But I've lived in Portland a lot of years. But I'm coming from, yeah, the West Coast, you know, the place is on fire, uh, uh, Portland, Oregon, much like Vancouver. It's a little spicy out there right now. I come from a family with a mom and a dad and sisters and shit. And I have a girlfriend. I'm sorry to disappoint the, any, any hopefuls in the crowd, you know. I'm sorry, but I'm off the market officially. That's my little moonbeam Lee right there. And this girl, man, she can, she can take down a bowl of chowder, no problem. But when she's sitting there uh, 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 eating her, her, her soup or whatever, I draw her. But she calls it murdering her because I really let her have it, you know. <laughs> I really, I'm always trying, you know, I'm not a big illustrator, you know, but I try. But things get better as I get going here, you know, and just murder that poor girl with, with uh, just, you know, with drawing. But whatever you know about me, it's still the same song and dance. I think Sean's had me here like six times now. But I love to make logos. That's my favorite thing in the world. Field Notes is a little uh, untechnology little device, you know, that uh, you can write on and have gambling debts and, and poetry and shit in. But that's about 15 years of field notes, right? This was a reaction to the quickening that I felt back in 2004 with, you know, phones and things and everything speeding up so fast, right? We are, we're always making new things every couple months for field notes. I hope you know about this stuff. Um, all that merch that's in that merch table back there going all day today, you should have seen me with the, with the stickers and the shit taped to the inside of the leg at the customs yesterday going across with the dog dogs and all that. Got a tough crowd here, huh? <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm trying. All right. This will be out there in a smaller situation. But for years, I've been doing this, making things, selling things at a fair price, and not trying to, uh, uh, I don't know, be too smart about it. We'll just kind of say, right? All these years of Skillshare classes, we really made sure that every kind of kid could use these things, not just experts, not just beginners, whatever you want to say. Um, I'm proud of that, right? I really thought about that. I am not a typeface designer, but I made my first typeface about six years ago now, and this thing continues to go and continues to go. My life used to look like this in the fall or in the spring. What a privilege to come to this today. What a privilege to go to all these I've gone to. It used to look like this, but of course, everything changed. I have gone all over those states, all, all the way to St. John's, all the way, did two nights in Saskatoon one time, two nights, who goes there, right? Uh, Bratislava, Slovakia, all right? I don't, know, I don't know what language I even spoke, but if you, can, if you can hold the crowd there, you know, okay? 
This is something like 475 or 478 or whatever over these last 10 years. You know, in, in, in Bratislava, <laughs> you go in the backstage, you steal all the waters and chips and shit, and you throw it out to the first two rows. That's the splash zone, see? See? Not supposed to do that in Slovakia either. But <laughs> I hope you know about the book. I smuggled a bunch of books over yesterday. Oh, my God, customs agents and uh, tariffs and waivers and, you know, the angle of the dangle divided by the coefficient of the hypotenuse, whatever the hell it was. But I got a bunch of books here. The books continue to sell. I hope you know about this stuff. So, all right, all of this, these last 47 years or whatever, I'm 49 now. But then this, and we all, I'm still reeling from this. You know, I've only had, I've had it one little mellow time, and I'm so thankful it was kind of mellow, but... That was a scary time. But see, before that, you know, in the summer of 2018, I moved into my backyard. Because this is not about who can be the bestest, fastest, coolest, uh, most money-making as graphic design uh, pursuit. It's about how do you refine your life down to where you're comfortable, comfortable, comfortable. And in my backyard, I built my own little shop, right? through the city, you know, and, and uh, there's walls and there's things and there's stuff, and they painted it, and that last 1500 bucks, I spared nothing but the best. I hired nothing but the best. This guy's name was Nubby. You can take a look here, you know, and he was the, con the concrete guy to connect the house to the shop, right, my 10-step commute. So this is the shop I work in, but I missed that COVID bullet by a couple years. We designed our lives to be as efficient as possible in the backyard. And, you know, my friends, they'll tell me about how rough they had it for those couple years in the pandemic. And we didn't really feel it. I, I feel so privileged to say that. It's not something to make fun of, but it's like we were in the backyard. So, yeah, this little thing, right? So when it all went down, we remember the date. Maybe it was a little different in Canada, you know. But in the States, it was kind of law. You can't do this. You can't do that. And that's fine. We locked it all down because our lives were here in the house and the shop and the tough sheds where I have extra storage for merch. You know, the fence, all the Antifa climbing over the fence on fire. You know, all that, the Antifa. You guys, you know, Portland, Oregon, you know. Sorry, guys. There's going to be some liberal ideas inside this presentation. I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> that's where I park. That's where Lee parks. 10-step commute. So our little lives were already two years baked into this 5,000 square foot, right? right? So when that thing went down, when Portland goes into hibernation, when the United States, when North America, when the world, so did we, you know, so did we. So I turn everything off. So did you. But instantly, I mean, I'm proud to say I try to really keep a pace. How many years do you get to do this? How, how many years do you get to kind of pull all this kind of shit off? And when I stopped it, I was so uncomfortable doing puzzles, you know, playing Tetris, you know, uh, the bread. Uh, my little sister's an esthetician. She did my nails, you know. <laughs> my van, I call it the gas pig. I went and murdered out the front. Like, I had time for, like, superficial, stupid things, like just making the black tires, black rims, black front, you know, this kind of funny stuff. But someone smashed my window on the, on the street, and I had the time to go. I'm not taking it to the Ford dealer. You know, it's 285 bucks. I fixed it on my own, and whoever goes inside the door in 40 years or something, they're going to find a little Easter egg in there, a little, <laughs> little, little East duct tape. I'm probably not supposed to lick the microphone, but a little, little Easter egg. But I got my molars out. And we're talking man-on-man -man force, man. That guy, he's a big dentist, climbing all over me, digging around in those ah, hell pits back there. And I walk in, and I see this pile of just murder. And I started to cry, and they're having to they're claw, and I'm trying to, you know, they're dragging me in by my feet and shit to get in there. But they yanked that, those things out. Man, I'm so light now. I'm just so light on my toes. I was carving again, cut the shit out of my finger. So here's the thing. I felt guilty doing this for, what, three months because, you know, I didn't get into graphic design to, you know, I don't know, win awards and this kind of shit. I got, to, I got into this stuff to get ahead, to just pay off my school loans, to, to take care of my mom now, shit like that. So to have time to rest on those savings, I'm still uncomfortable, you know. So when I did turn it back on, it was only pandemic projects. So... 
you know, I kept getting hit up for all this other stuff. Like things just kept going, which was very surprising. But I only took gigs that would help with corona awareness, you know, various awareness. Because we went to the supermarket like we all did. And I know it's corny, but I would thank that guy every time I went in there and just say, thanks. So when Adobe hit me up and said, who do you want to, you know, who, who do you want to pay a tribute to? Like, by the way, they hit up Shepard Ferry and all these other kick-ass uh, Motion G people and all this kind of stuff. And I got to do a poster for this guy, some guy out of Denver. But if you really think about it, it was scary, right? So to make art to say thank you to all these frontline heroes, sure, you know, it's still weird to talk about, but I'm still thankful. When I would make little graphics like this, I don't remember who this was for. It just kind of became clip art. When someone would hit me up, I'd say, well, do you guys have a cool hand washing graphic here? Take this one, give some different colors, and just go for it. Like, there's no money involved. I just would kind of donate it to the cause, right? You know, which is kind of what we were supposed to all be doing. So this wasn't about money. Like, if any job came in that had money, I would kind of deflect it to friends who might have been having a harder go because they, they needed it, right? But I have a buddy who, like, works on the front lines, you know, and he has the mask and the ventilator, and he's a nurse in a COVID ward. And these people were doing... 23-hour shifts and shit like this, right? And he would tell me about how people were going, like, mental health issues because, you know, people are getting sick, they're getting, they're not making it, things and stuff, like triage kind of stuff. So he's like, we've been calling ourselves the COVID killers. Make us a sticker. So this may or may not be littered all across a certain, a certain little uh, a triage unit, a, a, a COVID ward in Portland. You know, if I can use my time and my little resources in this little bratwurst mouse finger, look at that thing. Get a good, it's just disgusting. You know, if I can use that thing to maybe lighten up the people that were helping people's days, just a smidge, I think that's a good thing, right? So, of course... I started to go off the rails a little bit, you know, just a little bit. You know, this, this has nothing to do with the pandemic, you know. Shit, that's just DDC standard policy. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, just, uh, this one, this next one. If you're using that word the way my nephew uses it, you better check yourself, okay? It's the, the word is actually that you want to you know, flip, flip, do a, do a little shift command F and find and replace that shit out of your, your a little bit of language, I know. Where I'm from, where I'm from, they were storming the targets and the Walmarts. You know, the good old boys. Because they're not going to, no one's going to tell them what to do. How do you fight that shit back, you know? So we made funny little patches. We just made fun of them and ourselves. But what's cool, I sold 800 of these at 8 bucks a pop, whatever it was, donated a bunch of money. 3,000 went to a food bank. So the idea that here we are in this scary time, how can I use design in small little ways to maybe help someone? It wasn't, because here's the deal. The moment Uncle Sam gets their, you know, their, 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 you know in the States, it's 50%. I'd rather just give it all to someone to help people, right? So we did a bunch of that stuff. Now, to go back into just where everything kind of lifted and we're going fast, 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 I got lost in a guy's beard. Now listen, I am not a country music fan. I don't know what you guys got up here, but it is a lot of songs down there about daddy's hands and pickup trucks and all that bullshit that they're, whatever. But I got to work for a guy whose name is Chris Stapleton, and he's kind of an American guy, and he's a, he's, a, he's a class act, but he's changing things. I didn't know he was the Chris Stapleton that he is. So when you make a logo for him, and I'm like, are you sure you want to put stars and bars? Because I get heat when I show these things from my stamp or something I got to make for the USPS. I get heat because if you show that American flag, you're, you're suddenly some kind of right-wing asshole. No, 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 no. America, here. These are nations of immigrants, you know? We were 250 years ago, whatever the hell it was. But I explained that to Chris. He's down with it. But when you see this thing on a fleet of nine semis, you realize how big that Chris Stapleton is. I didn't know that. I don't work for these sorts of Chris Stapletons, right? So off and running. 
They did a murdered out version of this thing. We got to go see his show. 25,000 people he sold out just in the Northwest, right? And, you know, they, they put up the whole, the whole you know, they, these, there's this whole rigging crew of guys we got to meet that put up all this stuff, tear it all down every night. You know, he, has his, he owns his stage. He owns his stage and all the stuff. I stared him down in the back. A little bit of a client meeting, stared him down. But I've been making graphics for about six years for Chris, right? T-shirt graphics, like these little things, they go on your hard helmet. You know, the guys that build up that stage. Chris is from coal country. He grew up with guys that would wear hard helmets, digging out the coal, and they had these little, like, safety stickers and stuff on them. So Chris makes these things. Like, these will never see the, the, the sort of the light of day. This is just on his, like, the roadies hats and shit. But when you see something like this, like, I'm a record guy. I'm a vinyl. I mean, I love records. And... When Chris made his record, it was 200,000 pieces produced. Because he's like a Taylor Swift in country music, right? When Taylor Swift made her record, it was 500,000 records. That meant last summer, no one could make a record last summer because her thing just took over the whole industry. It's such a small thing. But on his record, he kept all these people employed in 2020 to do this thing. And that little Made in the USA sticker on there, which is a tricky thing anyway, I got to make the little sticker for that. These are the sorts of jobs these guys would come after me about. A year ago, I did his, what they call an ad material. Now, this will be used for a couple years. That's when they went to Canada, right? And did all the dates across the bottom there. Now, I'm not an illustrator, but I just kind of go for it, right? And then I tweak accordingly, right? Because you know, no one's going to tell me that you're not this, you're not, I mean, I'm certainly not a motion G guy, but I can go fast, I can go fast, I can do something, you know, I, I can do that. But I could learn, you know. My mom shows me on the Grammys a year ago, Aaron, your logo's for Chris, is up on the Grammys. So it's all over the place now, right? This last summer, we went to Nashville, because I did a little field notes thing, and we're down there for the day, and there was an exhibit there for Chris at the Country Music Hall of Fame. And I'm in there, you know, I'm making all the jokes about, oh, there's, uh, you know, whatever we're looking at, country music. But in his little exhibit case, and I remember seeing this when we were on the road, when you see that logo on those cases, it's not like he's been doing this 20 years. He's been about seven and a half. That's when it really starts to punch you in the face. Like, this thing is out there working for his band and his crew and his management. And then somewhere in that exhibit was one of my field notes, and we show the initial sketches for the little CS I made him, right? So it was in there, and that's going to be there for a couple years while, you know, Chris is on top of country music right now. Sweet guy. The coolest part is, in an interview, they did a gotcha on him. You know, they did this gotcha. And then all the country music went fucking crazy, because you're not supposed to say that in country music. But he did because they do. And I just appreciate that him sticking his neck out for everybody. You know, people are getting messed with. He did that in country music. That's why I'm so proud to work for him. And I asked his manager, is he good to the roadies? And all this team of management, he's very good to the roadies. You know, that's cool to hear. So here's a little bit of process from our rock and roll projects the last year or so. I am not a rock poster guy, but no one's going to tell me you're not allowed to. If you get the call, you get the call. It starts in my field notes for Jack White. It starts in my field notes. Then I go to a, uh, what do you call it, uh, an Adobe product, uh, Fresco. Fresco. Where's, where's Trani? Where's Paul? Where's Paul? You know, uh, uh, Fresco. I go to Fresco, and I do little sketches, and that's what I show the client real quick, you know. And then it just gets into Illustrator, and I just make it happen, right? But that's after a couple steps from just the first initial, you know, phone call to getting there and messing with the colors, how do we print this thing, to that. So I got to work for Jack White, my favorite band from high school, Dinosaur Jr., my favorite band. We're talking 1988. I'm 15 years old, and I heard him in skateboard videos, and I went, and, you know, I was a pizza, had a pizza job, went down to the, you know, to my little, uh, 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 you know, kind of Target or whatever, and got my first tape from Dinosaur Jr. in 1989 or something. But I got to make their fall tour poster last year. And remember when you were a little kid and you're raking the leaves and you're playing the rake? Same shit. So uh, uh, the band playing the rakes. I do a little sketch in the fresco thing on my iPad. And then the, they sign off and I make it, right? And this thing happens, right? And, you know, there's not a lot of money to be made in this rock and roll game, but I don't care. I got to make a poster for my very favorite band. And they sold 800 of them 
on the tour. They usually sell about 150 to 200, I was told. So that's cool. I mean, look at, look at the drummer playing the... Uh, <laughs> there's the crowd. There you are. The cool people in the front just... <laughs> but look at this. There's Jay Mascus, my hero. Bit of a buddy now. But he wears my hat. And I, every time I see this, when I'm looking at, you know, where they're at on tour or someone sends me a clip and says, Draplin, I saw him in New Orleans, he was wearing your hat. You know, I know, I gave him all these. But I'm just so proud to help out in any way I can, you know. And Jay will not smile ever. By the way, I'm almost 50. Jay's 57. And he's still doing this. And he's still making records. I just appreciate that because I was talking to a buddy before, you know, it's like, what is it like to get old and get older and age? And it's a weird thing. Should I be up here telling this last couple years of bullshit to you guys? I, I don't know. Should he be up there banging it out? Well, yeah, because for, it's for me and it's for us and whatever. I, I think about this stuff. So I got to work for Jay Maskless Dinosaur Jr. Now, here's a band, uh, intellectuals from Los Angeles, and there's a guy named Jack Black involved in Kyle. They call me and they say, we're going to Philadelphia. Now listen, this is not like Jack calling me. This is like levels of management and things and shit. And you get down to the muck where I'm getting the call, you know. And the girl says, well, Jack said that he wants like something with the bell. Oh, let me get a sketch going. I get a sketch going. And then I saw him a little, little procreate. And I guess Jack signed off on the thing, you know. And I made this poster for when, when these two were going to go and straddle the, 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 the bells of freedom in Philadelphia. Now... We're trying to keep shit clean here today, but just for a second here, I got a paycheck for this. <laughs> Here's some motion, G, motion G's for you. <laughs> I got a paycheck for this, and it was pretty good, and if I didn't, I kind of just don't give a shit. I got to work for a band that's been really funny and creative. They take good care of their people around them. Jack helps a lot of people with his fortunes and stuff. And that's what you hear when you're asking questions and listening, you know. Now, I got a merch table over there. No shame. But what a weird little life it's been because these are the items that people make fun of that I, I love to champion. I get bills like you do, and this thing actually works. But people pick it up and they go, oh, come on. Really? So this, this guy is selling the, the, what do you call it, the metaverse. Good luck with that one. That won't open up your envelope. But this thing will brush your teeth. I mean, it's pretty cool, these uh, metaverses and shit. But, you know, come on, black bristles, man. Get in there and just really clean up those fangs, right? Coin purses. Like, who even uses coins anymore? But see, the thing is, these are reminders to me. When you go to the, uh, the UK, the kids call it shrapnel with the tube, and I sell 50 of these things every time. I just give them all out because they still use them over there, right? So I love to champion this stuff because it's these things that people make fun of when they don't have a way to open their beer bottle and they're doing that <laughs> shit right here, glass and stuff. Suddenly this thing makes sense. So like who uses a comb anymore? I'm just disgusting. My back hair, I can like, part it this way, part it this way, and then leave parts at the other. Got a tough crowd, you know, just, <laughs> guys, come on. I'm trying here, okay? So where this has gone to, though, it's gone to these atmospheric things for someone like me. Like, I got to make a Timex watch. And who even uses a watch anymore? Well, I do because it's a reminder to slow my ass down. Everything else is going so fast, and it can fit on the tip of this little connector right here, your entire digital schmiggle diggle, whatever you call it, fine. But I slow my life down using these items, because everything else is just way too fast for me sometimes. But the coolest part about this is what I went to Berlin for three years in a row, like, the hard life of Aaron Drapp, and I got to go to Berlin three years in a row to go speak at this big design conference there. Typo. And when you're going shoplifting around Berlin, and you're in some kick-ass Carhartt store, you know, the sweet streetwear one they have there, the same exact collab. How do I know it was the same collab? Because when I was making mine, so was Carhartt six months before me. And the woman told me, like, Draplin, they didn't even print. They didn't even print all over the, the printing like you did. You know, it's like, well, that's, that's too bad. But I saw that watch in Berlin, and it was 350 euro. I get them for 47. 
and I sell them for, I think, 90 or whatever. I don't know if that will be Canadian, but, you know, I keep them as cheap as I can keep them, as accessible as I can keep them. Why do they put 300 bucks? Because that's what these people do on jackets, things, stuff, and whatever. But I'm proud of that because we've sold out, I don't know, six or seven runs of these things. Blankets for Rumple out of Portland. You know what I like about blankets? One size fits all. <laughs> if you're at my merch table and you're going, Aaron, should I get the medium or the large? That's like fourth grade for me, okay? You know, to my friends of size in this audience. By the way, what's the other show going on right now? Some kind of scrapbooking thing or something? Because I think you made the right decision coming to this hall. Look at this one, 2DPI. <laughs> I noticed that on the way over here at Tim Hortons, like, oh, shit. But look at this one. So we sold 1,000. We sold 1,000 of those, and they were hoping to sell 150. I said, well, keep the price chill. You'll get some people from my mess, and then, you know, just make sure that you can, they're, they're ready to ship. They sold all 1,000 of them. So when we do it again, we get to get weird, and, like, it's fleece, and there was a little pocket for, your, like, your field notes, perfectly for your field notes, or your little... I don't know, snacks or the remote or something when you're laying there. You ought to see me on the couch flossing with this thing. It is a lot of geometry. But I got to do a fleece one. I got to make a logo version after we sold out a thousand of those things. A logo version. And like the cool part about this, these are all logos I've never made a buck from. They're just logos that people look at in my orbit and say, hey, will you work for our restaurant? Will you work for our band? They don't even know. I'm just making fun of my dog or my mom or my little cousin or something, right? So that's the power of graphic design. You know, it's a weird thing. But blankets, making blankets, pocket knives. My friends have a company called the James Brand in Portland, and these things are just beautiful and simple and functional and sharp as shit. And you see, I put it on there. See that? Look at it. Sharp as shit. Right on the, <laughs> etched right on there, right on there. But when you get to make a little pocket, I couldn't bring any of these here, you know. When you get to make a little pocket knife like this, like this is something I use every single day, opening up my boxes, doing the mail, doing the whatever, doing the recycling. Every day I use knives. That's a little tiny one for your keychain. Um, we made a bigger one this last year. I mean, this thing is, it's a pretty serious knife, but the details are exquisite, exquisite. And that can happen. Like, my friends built an incredible knife company, and I got to make, you know, I don't know, a couple hundred of the things. So... All this merch, all this rock and roll, all this weird couple years, last couple years, a couple weird highlights. I'm always trying to move the needle. But, you know, I was just in Rapid City, and it's a red state. And we had Margie the marketer sitting right there. And she did, when I was talking about, I would have voted for this little connector, this HDMI connector, if it got in the fucking ballot after six, five years of that piece of shit that we had. I won't even mention his name. You got the cool hair. You know the <laughs> By the way, everybody, FITC, you too. You guys seem pretty fun. You're invited to my indictment party in Portland. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have pizza, a dunk tank. It's going to be, we're going to, we're going to talk bad about all of them. I, right down to every last fucking, uh, right. Hi, everybody. If, if they voted for him on the live stream, I feel bad for him there, too. But anyway, I got to work for Mr. Biden. I would have voted for anything. What a weird time in America. You know, is he old and he misses his words? Of course he is. He's 78 years old. But I would have voted for anything to get that scourge out of there. So I have all these graphics canned over the years. I donate them to all sorts of different things to help disenfranchise neighborhoods, things, and stuff. There's not a penny to be involved. Tomorrow is Jessica Hish. I'll be on the plane, but I wish I could see Hish because I'm a fan. I've been a fan of Jessica for a decade now. And she hit me up with Ade Hogue and said, hey, make some Instagram graphics and let's get the word out there. And I got to do a thing for you know, Biden's campaign through Jessica. I, I hope she'll show what she makes. It was beautiful. But I couldn't take it. I couldn't just make one. I made three because if I can just get it out there, just a little drop in the bucket. Well, I get crazy with this stuff, and then things are looking good, and it's actually looking like he's going to tip it the other way, right, and get that turd out of there. Well, as I'm going crazy in this thing, 
I'm just excited because it's from a place of play. It's not a, a place of fear, honestly. But I'm making graphics. I'm making things. I'm, I'm illustrating the two of them, you know, Joe and Kamala, you know, and, like, making this up. And I'm getting hate all over the place online and all this other stuff. But what was fun, when the dust settled and he actually won, a buddy of mine came and said, what's that typeface? I just built it. I don't know. So we made this thing called Biden Bold. We sold it for 2021 when he was inaugurated. That was our inaugural price. And here's the deal. I am not a typographer. But as I'm going and I'm cooking and I'm making things, and if something starts to resonate, you can become a typographer too, you know? We sell the hell out of this thing now, right? So I try. Is everyone all right? These chairs, these chairs yeah. Okay. 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 Moving right along. Moving right along. By the way, one time when I was on a stage in front of 250 people in Boise, Idaho, she said, "Well, you want to sit on a little a stool?" And I said, "Sure." So she goes running around to the back behind these like dividers. 15 minutes. That's it. Okay. Back to these dividers. She brings the stool out there. I sit on this thing. All 800 pounds gorilla beef on this thing, and it fucking explodes. And I go down. Bam! In front of 250 Boise people. Anyway, that's a true story. Okay. Trying to avoid the needle. So, historic pokes for quivering tripod. Listen, I don't like needles. I didn't like them when I was seven. I didn't like them when I was 47. But I used illustration to lighten, lighten it for myself. And, you know, it was scary. But here's the cool part. I had kids writing me and saying, hey, you know, thank you. Because, because, because I was afraid too. But, you know, I mean, I was getting horrible things in my, you know, my DMs and all that kind of shit. But I showed the entire process. I thanked all these people. You know, it was a beautiful, like whoever designed this whole system here, it was the same kind of thing for our Vax too in Portland. It was really beautiful and humane. And I was just, I was on edge of crying the whole day. And then, you know, I got the little poke, it was nothing, but I showed the entire thing. I made a little patch. We donated a couple thousand bucks for that. Like, I know it's all this weird shit. Like, oh, look at you. You know, he's, he's already called virtue signaling. No, my country asked me to do it. And I didn't do it just for me. I did it for my mom, who's 77 years old, right? So I tried to avoid the needle with that, okay, and using a little bit of design. So here's some recent work. We'll go real fast. I got to make a heavy metal pedal for my buddies in Red Fang, Red Fang, uh, a rock and roll record for Harsh Mellow. We printed it at Third Man Records in Detroit, did a little sticker sheet, and it turned out incredible. There's, a, there's this cool stuff, Canada, called Science. It's called science. It's irrefutable at times when they use things like reason and logic and fact. <laughs> Remember that? You know, the F word. And I got to work for NASA a couple times now teaching little kids about stratospheres and shit, right? That's pretty cool. Um, field notes always have something new going on. We, we did. We did. A five-pack of the field notes. We even did Lake Ontario. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. There's a couple out there in the merge table. Come check them out. Um, when I went to Nashville, we went and we used Hatch, you know, and when they would hit the page, every 500 pages, they would flip it and hit it again, flip it 500 more. So these are completely random all the way through, right? You know, so we've been so lucky to do that with our little, with our little field notes thing to where, like, you know, it's confusing now. Like, we don't know how to stock these things sometimes because we don't know what picture to show. Like, that's really fun. Other things that we make 100,000 of, they're all the same, but something like this, like, we're allowed to do that because it's ours. It's ours. We can make those decisions quick. Dinosaur Jr., a couple summers ago, I got to work for them and do a big illustration of the band and their history and all the people involved. And they sold a poster of this for their documentary, uh, a record for this band called the Franklin County. There's no money involved here, not a penny. But here's the thing. Don't let these guys murder it, right? The funny part about this, no money to be involved. I made this thing. I've gotten so many jobs because I showed all over my Instagram, right? But... If I can do that for Franklin County Trucking, I could do it for something on Warner Brothers or whatever, right? But see, when we were at the workshop yesterday, I was talking to these kids about how do you get to do the work you get to do? I trick people. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And you can too. <laughs> but you got to back it up when you get the call. More blankets. Stupid hats. You know. <laughs> any, any candy corn hat fans here? <laughs> A record for the old 97s out of Dallas. Like, I know how to do print. I was trained that way, but I don't really get to do much of that anymore, so it's always a treat now. 
little, little accoutrements for our, our, I don't even like soccer, but my buddies love, they love the Timbers in Portland, and I got to work for Danner Boots and Timbers and, you know, Aaron Drapp and whatever. I got, a, I got dice coming, these things. Me and my buddy Nakamoto, I call him Nakanodo because I whip his ass in dice and he has to buy lunch. He has to pick up the mail with dice. We let the universe chart the way. Speaking of the universe, every direction you go right now, if you go what, two blocks, you go past Pizza Pizza down there, right? Two blocks. Well, if you go 200 scrillion miles this way and you pass up Detroit, and then Portland, and then the Earth, and then the Samumpton Fear, all the way to the edge of the universe. And I just ask you, when you get to the edge of the universe, is there an edge? Or does it just go forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever? Think about that. It's real right this second. And it should humble you, because we don't know. My aunt tells you, after a while, you get to Catholic heaven. Well, she's full of shit, okay? So, I like science and reasoning, you know, logic. So, Here's the deal, when you become a typeface designer, and I'm not, you gotta have a website. But here's the, the, the deal here, you gotta ask for help. I don't know how to build a website, but there are people who do, you have to put your trust in, you have to be a good worker, be a good citizen, and they help me, and I have advocacy now. Because what happens when you make a typeface, and it gets a little bit of legs, Anheuser-Busch uses it or some shit, you know? It gets scary. If I went to Tim Hortons and I saw it on a wall, which I've seen many times at different places across the states, and they bought it for 55 bucks like you guys would buy it, that's not the same license. So we had to build a whole chart to show people how to use it, and we have legal representation. I don't know the first thing about this, but I, I had to ask for help and get advocacy to help me. And now, this is another little revenue stream that comes in with proper people holding these big things accountable, right, when they use it. John Hodgman's a friend and a funny satirist and stuff, and I got to do a couple book covers for John the last couple years. I'm, Tiny little owner of a, of a burger place in Portland called Super Deluxe. Got to do all the graphics with my buddy Dave Nakamoto. But the cool part is if you go there today on a Monday, Portland, Oregon, probably the same shit in Toronto or whatever, but there's a line out of every other place. It's for a beer and a burger or whatever. It's 29 bucks. That's Portland, Oregon, everybody, blah, blah, blah. You go here on a Monday, there's construction guys there because the prices are fair. And it's this idea of like design getting into their hands too. You know, decimal equivalent charts with my, with my typeface. What else? Skull patches. I got to work for Tenacious D again. A little homage to the, you know, you know, to the old Indiana Jones. Look at Kyle on the big meatball. You know, coming down the hall, and Jack carrying the, the little uh, phallus, you know, the little, off, the, off the little uh, whatever, you know. Okay. When we go out to the coast, I get inspired. I make a poster, sell a mountain of those things. Gloves. What else? Uh, gloves. Uh, rock and roll poster stuff. Out, that thing called Thing Festival out in the Northwest. Uh, I didn't know that you were allowed to sell your, your color palettes. Turns out you are. That was pretty cool. Uh, we just went to a big poster show in, in South by Southwest. That was a blast to show. I'm not a rock poster guy. There are people that are rock poster people. I'm not one of those. I'm a, I'm a visitor, right? But I got to show all the stuff I've been lucky to you know, make and sell. I got to make my own DDC fuzz pedal. That was awesome. Shoes, posters for Jason Isbell. Oh, um, uh, a little bit typo. Uh, Smith goggles. You know, I grew up using this stuff on the hill. When they call you to make a corn maze, you make the corn maze, okay? You go there, you sit on the big chairs, your nephew whips a gourd at you, it's awesome. But here's my favorite project in my last six years. I got to make a stamp for America, okay? Now listen, to the people I don't agree with listening or whatever you wanna call it, you use stamps too. And this is a true democratization of design because everyone needs a stamp and can afford a stamp. Too many times graphic design is only for those who can afford it, you know? Those who know about it, right? But I love that I got my graphic design dream, I got to make something for my country. When I went and picked it up the day that it came out, Eileen here, you know, I'm crying, I'm on the edge of tears. I got to make a stamp, my hand, you know, I'm quivering. And you can see here, you know, she's holding the stamps there, but look at that little piece of flesh over here, that little piece down under the counter, because we suspect that she was getting ready to hit the security buzzer. <laughs> I'm going to climb over or something. Because, you know, I'm shaking hands and shit and kissing babies. I got to make a stamp for the USPS. They made a, they made a patch. This is dedicated to our mail carrier, Fong, right? He flipped out. And I said, I told you I was doing some shit back here, man. Be good to your mail carriers. Be good to the gal who brings your FedEx. Be good to the people that bring your, you know, the post here, okay? I, you know, now they know me down there. And I go down there, made friends. I gave them all stamps. It's so cool cautious steps back into normalcy. 
we go and see trees now, and we remind ourselves that we are just blips, just blips at 49 years old. When you're up against 200 million years old, have a little respect for nature. So when we go to these things, we're just quiet. And we're there, and we're at the Grand Canyon, Lee and I, and just taking it in and saying, what does it mean to get older and age and do well and sometimes not do so well? And who gives a shit? We are just a, we're just a tiny little blip. And yet, I'm, you know, one of the things we talked about in the workshop is like, oh, Drappin, what do you do to relax? Well, I've been going to Palm Springs every eight months. My buddy got a place. They tuned it up. Oh, man, this is, I have broken so much shit there. It is so nice. And you're in this beautiful pool. And Lee, you, do you guys, you guys have... was like a SeaWorld skit with the herrings and shit. I was back there working on, you know, all sorts of shit. Okay, here's a little something for FITZ. Okay. Two minutes left. The greatest road trip I've done in the last 10 years. I've done many with Lee, but I got to take my buddy James across America. My buddy James has never been past Mississippi River. He's got six kids. lives in Knoxville, Tennessee. We've become friends. And I call him up and I say, listen, I'm going from my mom's place in Michigan. I'm going all the way to Dallas. Why don't you come with me to Dallas at least, and then I'll drive back to Oregon because Lee's going to fly home. So you come to me with Dallas. We'll go do this, one of these gigs there. This is about a year and a half ago. So when we get to Dallas, so the two of us in that van, the gas pig, the two of us on that single mattress. Now that's some logistics right there, okay? No app can figure out that shit. But anyway, we're getting hotels and stuff. But we, why go to Dallas? Let's go all the way to the coast. So we get to like, I took my buddy James across America and I showed him all the treasures. And you know, he's a photographer. So we're messing with these places. You know, that's the Forrest Gump road that, and, and you know, classic roadrunner kind of shit, right, down in Arizona. This is a bunch of friends in Dallas. It's called the Summit of the Ugly. <laughs> we got to have dinner and see a bunch of friends. But I took my buddy James all the way out west. And we go to the Grand Canyon. And then we're there, and we're doing the things, and all of a sudden it just goes quiet. We look, and this guy, and this little photographer jumps out of the bushes, and he's going to get the big moment. And we're all, whoa, 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 what's happening? And we're watching and we listen to the guy go down on one knee, and we're all listening. And maybe in the background, you hear a little, kur, 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 you know, some eagle or some shit. It's quiet, and we hear him, and he says, I think we should take our relationship to the next level. And I am just in the back going, tell her you'll jump off that Grand Canyon right now because you love her. Spit in his face, spit in his mouth. You'll do anything for her. You'll, 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 you'll cut yourself in half for her. Come here, sell it, man, sell it. And then... Oh, that's, that's Barack Obama calling, you know. <laughs> sorry, 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 Barack Obama. Um, so this guy just phones it in. The moment of all moments, it's, there's a photographer. So we talked to the photographer. My buddy's a photographer, James. And James goes, how's the day going, buddy? And the guy goes, oh, I've been waiting for this numb nut to do this all day long. And, it was, and that's what he did. You know, I've been waiting all day long. I go, get your camera ready, your lens caps on, because I got inspired, and I asked James to marry me. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you he said yes. He said yes. So people are just confused. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But his wife, Tyra, didn't take too well to that. They have six kids. So I took James all the way across America, all the way to show my home in Oregon. We hung out for a couple days, took him all the way to the coast, and we left him there. And we left him there. It was fun. Okay. We got a merch table back there. Please check us out online, fieldnotesbrand.com, DDC fonts, Lee, Lee's designs too. She's got stuff on the merch table too. There's my little, there's my thing. Okay, we're done, we're done. Phew, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Hey, we got like two minutes. Can I do one quick question? <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know if, uh, yeah, that was an amazing way to start the day. Thank you. Um, there was one point of clarification. Somebody online asked, uh, because you had the mic away from your face, what, what did Chris Stapleton say? He said... Um, the new record comes out. <laughs> no, he said Black Lives Matter is what he said. Yeah, he yeah, did. He did. That's what he said. So Black Lives Matter, he said, that's in, what he, he said. said it in an interview okay. and took a lot of heat for it. And um, 
I appreciate that. So Yeah. So there's a bunch of questions here, but um, this one says, I, this is a good one. Do you have any advice for graphic designers who suck at illustration? You seem to be doing more illustrative work than ever. As somebody who says you're not an illustrator, I agree. What, so what is the advice there? How do you break through that? I think it's just to find a place of play and fun and just go for it. If it's an audience of just the two of us, and he's a buddy and he sees what I do, he'll help push you along. But what happens when you put it on your Instagram? The fun part is this. I see people, not necessarily due to a strategy, but because they have nowhere else to go. And all they, they have a shitty job that they hate, and they love to draw, or they love to code, or they love to make, and they show nice round numbers, three, 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 six, six, six on their Instagram. They have this like color block of stuff. And the funny part is, this kid's not an illustrator, but he showed the work, mm. and then someone hired him or her or whatever for it. That's a manifestation of something that shouldn't have happened. And that's kind of the idea there, is just go for it from a place of play, put it out there. If it doesn't, if it doesn't ever bite, you still enjoyed your time. Mm. So, yeah. That's good advice. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're great. Uh, we're going to do the first break, but let me just remind you of a couple of things. First of all, I'm legally obligated to tell you that's an emergency exit. Awesome. Hopefully you don't need that. Um, and if you're going to be posting on social media, th I think I've got it on now. Thank you, though. Appreciate it. Um, if you're going to be posting on social please post on social media. Uh, tag FITC. The, the letters, FITC, at pretty much every channel. And then use the hashtag FITC Toronto. It's a good way to kind of find each other and see what's going on. Um, the conversation room is open. That's where a lot of the exhibitors are. We actually also have this cool, like, 180-degree video booth thing. Go over there. It's, uh, it's on the same floor here. It's just right across the way. Um, let's come back at 1040. So that's 15 minutes, okay? 1040 for the next speaker, uh, which is going to be Jared Ficklin. Very good. Thanks, everybody.